Hey, I'm Steve from This Week with Cars, and today I'm here with my 1960 MG MGA Roadster, and let's see if we can get it running. Uh, this thing's been sitting in a barn for a very long time. I have no idea when the last time it was ran. This MG was already partly taken apart when it was stored, so who knows what we're going to find when we try to get it started. Okay, let's check this thing out. Under the hood, there's a bunch of things missing. There's a hole right there where the master mm -hmm. cylinder for the brake and the master cylinder for the clutch should be. There's a hole over here. Should be a blower fan. Heater core is just sitting in there. Looks like the wiring has been messed with. The engine itself, though, looks like it's complete and still put together. You can see the dual SU carburetors there. Continuing around the car, uh, you can see inside the car, got the side curtains. There's the convertible top and frame. Okay, what's in the mystery bag? Got some hubcaps and the tonneau cover. You can see someone already took out the speedometer, the tachometer. Uh, this switch would not be standard. Looks like that's probably now turned into the turn signal switch. Uh, one of the knobs is missing here. Ignition key is there. The rest of the interior looks pretty complete. It looks like someone put four brand new wheels on the car. Back here in the trunk, another brand new wheel. Looks like there's the missing gauges and the missing front lamps. There's the master cylinder. Some paperwork here. These are brand new hubcaps. So, let's see if we have a date on here. Uh, 1987. So, Maybe this car was taken apart in 1987. It hasn't been running since that. It definitely looks like it could be. There's a bunch of red down here, so maybe this car has been painted once already, or maybe it had just been freshly painted and was being put back together, but somebody didn't finish the job. When I clean the car off, I guess I'll find out if it looks like it's a new paint job or not. Let's take a look behind the seat. See if there's a battery in this car. And that actually is. These cars would have originally had two 6 volt batteries. It's pretty common to convert it like this. This person had installed one single 12 volt in here. You can see where they connected the two wires together. So, I need to get that battery out of here. You can see by the look of this battery that it's been in here a long time. Okay, I'm going to connect up this battery pack. This car is a positive ground car. So, this one is grounded to the body. The other side goes up to the starter solenoid. Sure that I have a good connection. I'm going to take the spark plugs out to make it a lot easier to crank over for the first time. And before I pull the spark plug wires off, I'm going to mark them. Okay, now I can pull them off. All the spark plugs are in good shape. Uh, they don't have a lot of rust on them, so I'm not really worried uh, that this engine is corroded inside. Luckily the carburetors are still on, and the exhaust is still on, and the air cleaners are on, so that would have kept a lot of stuff out of the engine. Definitely would have kept the mice out. Okay, I'm going to squirt some oil down inside the cylinders, and that will help the piston ring seal and give us a lot better compression for trying to start it. These cars don't use electrical solenoids for the starter. 
Instead, they have this cable pulled solenoid right here. There should be a cable coming out of here and up to the dashboard. Someone's removed that. But if I pull on this, the starter should run. So I should be able to just pull this back and the engine should turn over. Okay, the engine turns over well. I'm going to put the spark plugs back in now. The next thing that we need is spark. So, I'm going to pull the distributor cap off. So we can take a look at what that looks like. Underneath the cap, actually looks almost brand new in there. The points look pretty good. They're a little bit corroded, so I'm going to clean those up. Alright, in order for us to get spark, not only do we need to have the distributor working properly, but we need power to the coil. So, connect this to the power side of the coil. Alright. Right now we don't have any power to the coil, which we shouldn't, so I'm going to hit the switch. So I'm going to turn the ignition switch on and we'll see if we have any power. The ignition switch is now on. And we do have power going to the coil. So, that means the electrical system is working well enough for us to actually start this. The last component we need to get it running is fuel. So. I'm going to disconnect the fuel input here. I'm going to hook a fuel hose directly up to this from a canister. Looks like the choke is still connected, but the throttle is not connected to anything and the two carburetors are no longer connected together. Uh, the little bolt that locks this carburetor to the other carburetor has fallen out and is missing right there, but that's okay. I can adjust both carburetors, idle settings with the screws right there. We should still be able to be as, able to start this thing. Okay, I've got my fuel bottle here, and I'm going to connect that up to the fuel inlet on the carburetors. There we go. And I'll just tighten that down, and we'll have fuel. All right, I'll turn the fuel on. See if it starts to leak anywhere. You can hear the fuel going into the float bowls. There you can see it's leaking out now. Leaking out of the vent on this one. I'm going to shut the fuel off. One trick on carburetors, a lot of times if you just tap them with a hammer, it will cause the, the fuel bowl valve to free up and start to work. So I'm just going to give it a few taps up here. Okay, turn the fuel back on. It looks like it worked. Looks like the other side is holding fuel as well. I'm just going to give it a couple taps just for good measure. Okay, I think we're ready to try to start this. Okay, turn the ignition on. Looks like I need some more power than what the battery pack can supply. The engine's cranking over real slow right now, and I think a lot of that has to do with the bad situation with the battery cables. Someone, when they changed it from using two 6-volt batteries to one single 12-volt battery, uh, they also put side terminals on the battery cables because that's probably the only battery they could find in 12 volts that would fit into the battery trays. Uh, you can see right here, this battery cable is connected in some way to the original top post terminal right here. At least that's what it feels like, so I'm going to need to take this apart and clean that up, make that a better connection, 
And I'm also going to cut off these side posts and put top posts back on here for a normal uh, car battery. Okay, here's my new top post terminal. These come preloaded with solder. So all I have to do is heat this up with a torch and put it on the wire. But first I'm going to put some heat shrink on here that I can then move into place once this is soldered on. Okay, before I put a terminal on this side, I want to check out that this cable is something I actually want to use. So let's see what's hiding under here. This stuff is terrible, this electrical tape turns into a gooey mess after it's been on there a long time. Okay, so I didn't expect to find this. Actually, neither side of this cable has a terminal on it. But it does use a battery cable connection uh, quick connect thing here. Over the years, so we'll have gotten some corrosion in between the wires and I'm just going to take this apart and redo it. You can see how that worked. You slipped your two wires in there and then you tighten this nut down uh, in order to clamp them together. I cut this end off but you can see there's still a lot of corrosion inside of here so I'm going to keep cutting it back more and see if I can find a clean piece of metal in here. Before I connect up the battery, I'm going to clean up the ground. You can see it's bolted to the frame right here. There isn't even a washer on here, so it's not making full contact with the connector on the battery cable. Not only that, but it's loose. So I think this is going to make a big difference in supplying power to the starter. I've cleaned the rust off of here and I've got a new bolt for the washer to put on there. It doesn't matter how much power you throw at the vehicle, if the battery cables are not in good shape, then it's not going to transfer that power correctly. And so I'm going to disconnect the two cables coming into the starter solenoid and get those cleaned up as well. Now that I have the battery cables changed back to top post, I'm going to throw this brand new battery in. This is a Group 26 battery. I think I want to turn it around so that the hot terminal is not close to the chassis. I'll move it so it's over here. This might have been a better configuration with a Type 26R battery which reverses the polarity of the terminals. One thing I like to do on engines that are starting for the first time or if you're at the racetrack and you have a vintage race car with a pretty high compression that doesn't want to start in the morning is to take your torch not only will the torch clean off anything that's on the spark plug, but it will heat it up and it'll work kind of like a glow plug and help an engine start when it's cold or when it hasn't started uh, in a very long time like this one where we probably have some corrosion on the valve so our compression isn't up where it should be yet. Okay, I started up the engine and it started leaking oil everywhere. The oil is coming out of this hose here which goes up to the oil pressure uh, gauge. And if I start the car, you'll be able to see the oil pouring out of there. So this hose right here is leaking on this car and I pulled another old one off of a 
another MGA engine that I had sitting around. Um, so I'm going to install this one and see if this one leaks or not. You will need a quarter inch Whitworth uh, wrench to get this hose off. Okay, I've got the new hose installed. Let's fire it up and see if the oil leak is gone. The car does run and it sounds pretty good. As you can see, that other hose did leak as well. So this is as far as I can go without ordering any new parts. If you like these videos, click subscribe and comment below.